Blessings dear friends, greetings of Jesus. This is your friend Jacob Fash speaking to you at the moment from the UK. You know, so many of the questions we get in our Roku broadcast and on our Vimeo clips and on YouTube deal with subjects that we deal with much more extensively in our books. We can't for the sake of brevity uh, go into the kind of depth in a TV broadcast we can actually go into in a book. But so many of the questions come from material that are expounded in the books on a much more broader scale that it's almost frustrating sometimes that we can't spend hours and hours answering a, a, the questions that, that are given to us. Obviously, practicality dictates that's not a possibility. The books are there. They're available. They're available in print, the Moriel catalog on the Moriel website, moriel.org. But in this day of Kindle and electronic books, they're also available through Amazon and they're available through Kindle. Kindle. The three books that would be the most referred to in the questions we receive are the three latest books. The first being The Dilemma of Laodicea. The Dilemma of Laodicea is an exposition of the seven churches in Revelation, culminating with the final two churches, Philadelphia and Laodicea particularly, setting the stage for the return of Jesus. The Dilemma of Laodicea would be the first. The second would be Shadows of the Beast. Shadows of the Beast. How the coming Antichrist, how his identity will be revealed to the faithful church. The rapture will not happen, will not happen, absolutely not happen, until the faithful church knows who the ultimate beast of revelation is. That is the Antichrist and also the false prophet. How the identity of the coming Antichrist will be revealed to the faithful church Shadows of the Beast, the second book. And the final and latest one, Harpezo. Harpezo, what the scripture actually teaches about the rapture, the snatching away which takes place between the sixth and seventh seals in the book of Revelation. So these three books, The Blum of Laodicea, Shadows of the Beast, and Harpezo, all available on the Morial catalog, all available through Amazon, and all easily available electronically by Kendall. Thank you so much, dear friends. God bless, and Jesus be with you. I have a generally high view of A.W. Tozer theologically, and I recommended his books. He went to be with the Lord in the early 1960s before I was a Christian, but he certainly has had a profound impact on many believers and something of an impact on me. My view of him is generally positive. However, there is one caveat. There is one area where I think we need to be careful in considering him. Much to his credit, he was a Wesleyan Armenian, and essentially, and he was also not a cessationist. He believed in the ongoing ministry of gifts of the Holy Spirit. And this was before the charismatic movement took off. He, he was familiar with Pentecostalism, and he was not a cessationist. He believed the charismatic gifts still operated in the church. These and many other things, particularly his devotional material, and his understanding of the atonement and the sacrifice of Christ, 
and the resurrection, all of those things are much to his credit in the way that God blessed him and used him. His one weakness, his Achilles heel, however, and we have to be careful of this, was that he had strong leanings towards Charles Finney. Remember, people will say God has used Charles Finney and things of this nature, and I don't deny that that may have an element of truth in it. But the unfortunate fact of the matter is that Charles Finney was a borderline heretic. He leaned very strongly towards Pelagianism. The scriptures teach that we are born fallen because of the sin of Adam. We're conceived in sin, and we are born fallen. Therefore, we must be born again. Finney denied this. The only thing that separated him from a full-blown Pelagian who denies original sin was that Finney agreed everybody had sin. This is why I'm very reluctant to ever cite Charles Finney in any positive sense. Theologically and philosophically, easy beliefism, cheap grace, in part is spawned by the incipient influences of Charles Finney, to whom A.W. Tozer had plain leanings. The idea that we can choose God on our own initiative without an act of divine intervention. Nobody comes as the Father draws him. Man can not choose Christ of his own initiative. The Lord must choose us, then we must respond once we are quickened. He was somebody who had very, very wrong ideas on the nature of fallen man that badly affected his understanding of the gospel. And there is no question that A.W. Tozer leaned towards him. So for all of the many good things I would say about A.W. Tozer, I would not put him in the top five of my favorite Christian authors or possibly even the top ten. Uh, this is not to disparage or discourage the many other fine things he wrote, said, and did. But Finney was as much bad news as he was good news. There have been incipient damages caused to the body of Christ by Finney that in the long term has affected many things wrong with the church even today. Man is fallen. Original sin is a hard core reality. Now, again, A.W. Tozer did not deny this, did not deny this, but he definitely leaned towards Finney. I would not call Tozer a Pelagian, but I would almost call Finney a Pelagian. And Tozer had this leaning towards Finney, which I consider to be unfortunate. It was the weak point in his ministry. It was the weak point in his legacy. Now, God bless him for the many good and positive things he wrote, said, and did. But he did not understand the danger of Finney. Finney was a hair breadth away from being a full-blown Pelagian heretic. It is as wrong on one extreme as hyper-Calvinism is on the other. That is my view of A.W. Tozer. But I again point out, I have a high regard for him theologically and doctrinally in most areas, including his pneumatology, certainly in his soteriology, apart from the Phineas influence. Uh, thank God that he sent us someone like A.W. Tozer, but none of us are perfect, and Tozer was no exception. My name is Jacob Prash. Thank you so much for your question. God bless. Mm -hmm.